Who's up guys? We've got a train XV system and the thermostat saying that the outdoor unit is offline. Display. No lights. And I'm going to guess no power. check for power on these units right there zero which means no high voltage no DC voltage Thing coming in the disconnect box. voltage at all that will definitely cause a communication fault that will tell you the outdoor unit is offline so let's go find the breaker voltage let's put this thing back in and see what happens you want to wait for this to boot back up eventually it'll establish communications with everything and you'll get two three four five so this has zoning hooked up to it so we have a, two thermostats inside the indoor unit the outdoor unit uh, which is a furnace in this case um, and your zoning control panel and this is a straight AC version so let's go back in there and turn the thermostat on and see what happens
All right, I'm back out here. I was being a little quiet earlier because they had the window right above me opened up and he's standing there listening to me. So it was showing at the thermostat when I got here. Uh, alert code, system communications fault. And when I go into the system summary, it tells you uh, that the outdoor unit was offline. I didn't have any power out here, so I didn't have any lights, nothing, no 240, which that's where you'll test on these units to check your incoming voltage. Then you've got these test points down here where you'll check your DC voltage. Um, went over to the breaker panel and the breaker was off for the outdoor unit. We haven't been here since November. So now it's in oil return mode and system oil return and compressor lube those are just self maintenance items that, that are built into this if this compressor doesn't run like in milder weather if it doesn't run i think it's 2800 rpms if it doesn't run that speed for a while it'll go into an automatic uh what's called compressor lube and then it will ramp that compressor up to about 2800 rpms because it's trying to get oil all the way to the top of that compressor and get it lubricated um, during times when it doesn't really run as hard run at a high capacity maybe it runs 35 40 50 percent or lower and uh it runs but the, it, it, it just makes sure that i mean it measures the rpms on it monitors that when it's running if it doesn't run that rpm on a regular basis in milder weather it'll it'll go into that mode to get that oil to the top of that compressor to get it lubricated so i've got it in a normal call right now i may go in and put it in charge mode there is a mode that you can run this thing in uh, where you can just go in and put it into a charge mode and it'll go ahead and turn everything on and run it run it up to full full speed full capacity but i want to wait for this thing to come on on its own if i can um, but I may go in inside and do that. I think they've just now turned it on for the first time in the season. So let me go in there. I'm going to go in there and put this thing in charge mode and see what happens. I just want to make sure this compressor was not the reason. But there are situations where you can put this thing in charge mode. And if that compressor is cold and that dome temperature is not above a certain temperature, it won't allow the compressor to come on. So let's, let's go check that real quick and see what our compressor dome temperature is monitor menu just scroll down to system and we'll go over here tells you your compressor's percentage your compressor speed and rpms your cooling position which this one's a straight ac so it's going to be cooling all the time uh, load shed we don't have a load management box hooked up if you did you would wire that into this board and then go in here and set it up for load management ambient temperature outside 51 degrees and we don't have suction temperature sensors at 52 which has not been running so that matches outdoor and our dome temperature is 55 degrees so I don't know if this thing will come on and run without warming up that dome temperature sensor. I have had to do that in the past where I pop the top and put that thing in my hands for a few minutes and then uh, hook it back up and then turn it on real quick. This, that may be the case. I can't. I think it's maybe 60 degrees I'm thinking. So we'll see what happens. This does have a uh, sump heater on it. I don't know if that straight ACs do or not. We're getting ready to check that. So if I go in here and check my amp draw on this thing right here. So the meter for amps. So you see that thing right there, it's pulling like 1.5 amps. That lets you know that it's in uh, your compressor heater, sump heater, uh, crankcase heater whatever it is there's not a belly band or a crankcase heater on these compressors the unit uses the windings so those windings will energize a little bit to heat up this compressor for that situation it's kind of internal to the compressor so we may need to have to wait until this thing uh, warms up enough that it will actually call for the compressor to be on 
will allow the compressor to come on. Um, obviously my motor's not running, so you go back there. So let me see if it will let me turn this thing on in check charge mode and uh, from the thermostat, see what happens. All right, guys, I have put this thing in check charge mode. When you go into the charge mode to get this thing to run, tell you it'll stabilize out in about 20 minutes. <clears throat> Typically, when you're doing a startup on one of these things, you'll let it go through this mode. It runs at 100%. Once you stabilize through your 20 minutes, then you'll set your charge, superheat, subcooling. I'm going to try to check the charge on it. It's cool out here, but when you go into the check charge mode, it'll tell you, and this thing's running pretty much at 100% speed right now. And look at that amp draw. 5.5 amps. So that's pretty damn efficient for, for an inverter system like this. Uh, and it's running at 100%. The compressor's on. Our fan's on. So I'm going to try to just put some gauges on it real quick just to get an idea what the press pressures are. So when you bring it up to that check charge mode, it'll tell you on there. Temperature, outdoor temperature must be, if you're going to do it in cooling, must be between 55 and 120 degrees. Now uh, this one is not a heat pump, so I, I wasn't able to run it in heat pump. It's just a straight AC. And then we've got a communicating two-stage furnace. Uh, the system is zoned. I do have both zones calling. Or uh, they should be calling in this check charge mode anyway. Train zoning. Which is okay, I guess. We haven't had a lot of problems. With train zoning systems, I think we had a sensor or two go bad on one. Or a static pressure transducer, whatever you want to call it. Let's see what this pressure looks like it's 74 in the house so the amp draw and the compressor is good that's a 25 amp breaker in that box and we're at five and a half amps so they, they did say sometime in you know last couple of months they had their crawl space sealed which I haven't been under there yet uh, unless and she said she did tell them not to do anything with the AC equipment um, or the heating and try to be careful around that, not to mess anything up. So they may have just turned that breaker off thinking that was the breaker to the whole system just to be safe, make sure they didn't damage anything or something. I don't know. I would think not damaging something would mean stay away from it myself but uh, and be careful while you're around it. But anyway, let's uh, see what these pressures look like real quick. I wish this one was a heat pump. I'd show you guys how to how you do that test on the reversing valve deal. Okay, here we go. I think I need to put. Is that one even on? No, it's not on. There we go. So I'm gonna say those pressures are pretty good. I'm not putting the client the. You know, this is what I'm not gonna use analog gauges or anything with manifolds with hoses on these because these systems are charge critical just like a package unit or a mini split would be once you get this thing installed and you get the setup on it and you get the charge set on it you don't want to be coming out here putting manifolds on it snubbies or some type of probe like this is what you're going to want to use because this thing is you hear most units you weigh them in and then you got the outdoor units good for 15 20 foot of line set this thing is not good for that it comes with what it has in it and then you have to weigh in for the length of your line set and the coil that your what size coil is being installed on it and uh, there's a book that shows you how to make those calculations it's basically just six ounces for every 10 foot of line set 0.6 for a foot which is six ounces for each foot of 10 feet of line set and then whatever your adder is for your coil and then it should be real close and then you'll put it in check charge mode let it run and then you'll kind of tweak your sub cooling get it set and then you leave it alone um, that's why I like the new Tamex, the new variable speed systems that have come out now. They've added a liquid line transducer on this thing or a discharge line transducer. So you can actually go into this thing now with your app 
there's an app that you'll have on your phone you link it bluetooth to the unit and it'll bring up a set of gauges and it'll tell you what your low and high pressures are tells you what your superheat and subcooling are um, and a whole lot of other things actually because it's reading a lot of other information so um, just another advancement they've made in these things and I took that class last month I think so once we start installing them we'll see how they work but I'm guessing the only thing we had going on here was somebody turned off the breaker to the air conditioner outside and if you turn it off it immediately goes into that fault so when that would have happened I don't know it'll as soon as something loses communications it's gonna let you know so I mean this unit's running fine five and a half six amps uh, I am gonna own that compressor out real quick which it's gonna you know leg to leg to leg see what that is um, if there's an issue with that I will update you but uh, it looks like we just had another breaker that was turned off and it, it's happened before you get those calls but uh, this is your compressor harness on this it's going to be grounded in thermostat wires obviously your line voltage all your sensors and different things come in and plug together to a main harness here the board shows you what each one of these pins are checking things in DC volts for temperature sensors and things like that a little blue and yellow one back there that's coming from your reversing valve um, this is your communications uh, your CDA to this so we're at 14 minutes now this thing yeah I got the umbrella up it's raining go figure yesterday it was 85 today it's raining and 52 degrees but anyway not much else to do on this one um, they use the refrigerant lines as a heat sink on this to try to help keep this thing cool so you've got refrigerant that goes through here this line's kind of tied into the refrigerant circuit so it helps to keep it cool um, it's a quiet unit but uh anyway that's it for this one guys like subscribe appreciate you watching appreciate everybody that has subscribed um just getting out here doing this thing so you guys enjoy your weekend it's friday uh it's gonna be rainy and cool here hopefully it's warm and enjoyable where you are but uh thanks for watching guys have a good weekend